Pulse Oximeter What is Pulse Oximetry? Pulse Oximetry is an non-invasive monitoring technique used to estimate the measurement of the saturation of peripheral oxygen and it is an estimate of the saturations of arterial oxygen. Oxygen saturation is an indicator of the percentage of hemoglobin saturated with oxygen at the time of the measurement. Principle of Pulse Oximetry The reading, obtained through pulse oximetry, uses a light sensor containing two sources of light, red and infrared, that are absorbed by hemoglobin and transmitted through tissues to a photodetector. The infrared light is absorbed by the oxyhemoglobin, and the red light is absorbed by the reduced hemoglobin. The amount and type of light transmitted through the tissue is converted to a digital value representing the percentage of hemoglobin saturated with oxygen. Oxygen saturation values obtained from pulse oximetry represent one part of a complete assessment of a patient's oxygenation status and are not a substitute for measurement of arterial partial pressure of oxygen or of ventilation as measured by arterial partial pressure of carbon dioxide. The Pulse Oximeter A pulse oximeter consists of the monitor containing the batteries and display and the probe that senses the pulse. The Pulse Oximeter Monitor The monitor contains the microprocessor and display. The display shows the oxygen saturation, the pulse rate and the waveform detected by the sensor. The monitor is connected to the patient via the probe. During use, the monitor updates its calculations regularly to give an immediate reading of oxygen saturation and pulse rate. The pulse indicator is continuously displayed to give information about the circulation. The audible beep changes pitch with the value of oxygen saturation. The monitor is delicate. It is sensitive to rough handling and excessive heat and can be damaged by spilling fluids on it. The monitor can be cleaned by gently wiping with a damp cloth. When not in use, it should be connected to an electrical supply to ensure that the battery is fully charged. The common types of pulse oximeters are, fixed monitor type, portable type, ambulatory wrist type, and ambulatory finger type. The pulse oximeter probe. The oximeter probe consists of two parts, the light emitting diodes and a light detector, called a photodetector. Beams of light are shone through the tissues from one side of the probe to the other. The blood and tissues absorb some of the light emitted by the probe. The light absorbed by the blood varies with the oxygen saturation of hemoglobin. The photodetector detects the light transmitted as the blood pulses through the tissues and the microprocessor calculates a value for the oxygen saturation. In order for the pulse oximeter to function, the probe must be placed where a pulse can be detected. The LEDs must face the light detector in order to detect the light as it passes through the tissues. The probe emits a red light when the machine is switched on. Check that you can see this light to make sure the probe is working properly. Probes are designed for use on the finger, toe or ear lobe. Hinged probes are the most popular, but are easily damaged. Rubber probes are the most robust. The wrap-around design may constrict the blood flow through the finger if put on too tightly. Ear probes are lightweight and are useful in children or if the patient is very vasoconstricted. Small probes have been designed for children but an adult hinged probe may be used on the thumb or big toe of a child. Common type of pulse oximeter probes include Hinged probe Rubber probe, neonatal probe, ear lobe probe, forehead probe, nasal probe and disposable probe. The oximeter probe is the most delicate part of a pulse oximeter and is easily damaged. Handle the probe carefully and never leave it in a place where it could be dropped on the floor. The probe connects to the oximeter using a connector with a series of very fine pins that can be easily damaged. Always align the connector correctly before attempting to insert it into the monitor. 
Never pull the probe from the machine by pulling on the cable. Always grasp the connector firmly between finger and thumb. Procedure Wash hands to reduce the transmission of microorganisms. Standard precautions Use personal protective equipment to reduce the transmission of microorganisms. Select the appropriate pulse oximeter sensor for the area with the best pulsatile vascular bed to be sampled to obtain accurate SpO2 measurements. Use of finger sensors produce the best results over other sites. Do not use one manufacturer's sensor with another manufacturer's pulse oximeter unless compatibility has been verified. Select desired sensor site. If using the digit, Assess for warmth and capillary refill. Confirm the presence of an arterial blood flow to the area monitored because adequate arterial pulse. Avoid sites distal to inwelling arterial, catheters, blood pressure cuffs or venous engorgement. Plug oximeter into grounded wall outlet if the unit is not portable. If the unit is portable, ensure sufficient battery charge by turning it on before using. When system is used in the portable mode, always check battery capacity. Apply the sensor in a manner that allows the light source, light emitting diodes, to be directly opposite the light detector, photo detector, to determine a pulse oximetry value properly. Shielded from excessive environmental light because light from sources such as examination lights or overhead lights can cause elevated oximetry values may be blinding the light sensor. Troubleshoot by reapplying the sensor or shielding the sensor with a towel or blanket. Position so that all sensor emitted light comes in contact with profuse tissue beds and is not seen by the other side of the sensor backslash or without coming in contact with the area to be read. Because if the light is seen directly from the sensor without coming in contact with the vascular bed, too much light can be seen by the sensor, resulting in either a falsely high reading or no reading. Gently position the sensor so that it does not cause restriction to arterial flow or venous return because the pulse oximeter is unable to distinguish between through arterial pulsations and fluid waves. Restriction of arterial blood flow can cause a falsely low value and lead to vascular compromise, causing potential loss of viable tissues. Level of the heart reduces the possibility of venous pulsation. Moving the sensor to another site on a routine schedule also reduces tissue compromise. Never place the sensor on an extremity that has decreased or absent sensation because the patient may not be able to identify discomfort. Plug sensor into oximeter patient cable to connect the sensor to the oximeter, allowing SpO2 measurement and analysis of waveforms. Turn instrument on with the power switch allow 30 seconds for self-testing procedures and for detection and analysis of waveforms before value are displayed. Determine accuracy of detected waveform by comparing the numeric heart rate value with that of a monitored heart rate or an apical heart rate or both. Consider moving the sensor to another site. If the pulse rate detected by oximeter does not correlate with the patient's heart rate, the oximeter is not detecting sufficient arterial blood flow of accurate values. Set appropriate alarm limits according to the patient's condition. Oxygen saturation limits should be 5% less than patient acceptable baseline. Wash hands to reduce transmission. Cleanse non-disposable sensor, if used, between patients with manufacturer's recommended germicidal agent. Always make sure that the alarms are on. Troubleshooting the equipment. If no signal is obtained on the oximeter after the probe has been placed on a finger, check the following. Is the probe working and correctly positioned? Try another location. Does the patient have poor perfusion? Check for low cardiac output especially due to hypovolemia, cardiac problems or septic shock. Check the temperature of the patient. If the patient or the limb is cold, gentle rubbing of the digit or earlobe may restore a signal. 
What do the alarms on a pulse oximeter tell you? Alarms alert the anesthetist to clinical problems. The alarms are as follows. Low saturation emergency, hypoxia, that is SpO2 less than 90%. No pulse detected. Low pulse rate. High pulse rate. Low saturation alarm. The oxygen saturation in healthy patients of any age should be 95% or above. No pulse detected alarm is commonly caused by the probe coming off the finger. Check the probe site quickly and then assess the patient ABC. Pulse rate alarms are useful to let the anesthetist know that the heart is beating too fast or too slow. What factors can interfere with the pulse oximeter reading? Several factors can interfere with the correct function of a pulse oximeter including Light bright light, such as the operating theater light or sunlight, directly on the probe may affect the reading. Shield the probe from direct light. Shivering movement may make it difficult for the probe to pick up a signal. Pulse volume The oximeter only detects pulsatile flow. When the blood pressure is low due to hypovolemic shock or the cardiac output is low or the patient has an arrhythmia, the pulse may be very weak and the oximeter may not be able to detect a signal. Vasoconstriction reduces blood flow to the peripheries. The oximeter may fail to detect a signal if the patient is very cold and peripherally vasoconstricted. Carbon monoxide poisoning may give a falsely high saturation reading. Caring of Pulse Oximeter When the probe gets dirty clean it gently with a damp cloth or alcohol swab, special attention on hinge. Position safely to avoid dropping or damage from spillages. When connecting your probe, or the lead, always insert the plug correctly. Note that the lead only ever inserts one way, check the shape before inserting. When disconnecting and connecting probe, grip the plug firmly and not the cable. If the cable is pulled, small wires inside will break. When not in use, always coil the lead and position the probe where it cannot be damaged. Too tight a coil will damage the lead. Leaving the lead dangling will result in damage. Action Plan for Low SpO2 Thank you for patient listening.